the abysmal valley, the valleys of meditation or seven valleys of Sufis. Sixth is known as abysmal valley. One disappears. In the fifth valley, the process of the dissolution of one has begun. Now in this, the process of dissolution is completed. This process of disappearing as you are is known as Fana in Sufi terminology. In the sixth, one is no more. One is a memory only of the past. One disappears. In the fifth, one was disappearing. The process has begun. The process of entering into death has begun. In the sixth, death has happened as you are. Death means not as you know it. When we continue to live in our past, in our conditionings, by the unconscious and subconscious, that is death. To come out of that is to experience a state of deathlessness. You are no more afraid. You have tasted something that is eternal for the first time. In the sixth death has happened, one is no more. That is why it is called the abysmal valley. It is the most painful one because it is the sixth and last and last but one. One passes into the greatest pain of not being or non-being or nothingness. One cannot believe it because in a certain sense one is and in another sense one is no more. The paradox has come to the ultimate peak. One is and one is not. Means a situation is like this. When you were growing, you had your say in everything. You want this thing to happen that way. Everyone seeks your opinion. You are part of the active life. Which house to bought? How the house has to be decorated? In everything, you had a say. Now, you have reached to a state. Children have grown up. You are no more the ultimate head of the family. You are watching everyone doing things, but they are doing things the way they want it. You are no more the boss in the house. It is someone else who is ruling now. This becomes very painful. Many times it happens, the elderly people who continue to live with their grown-up children, they complain of that problem. It happened once someone had asked me that his son does not listen to him, he smokes and drinks in front of him. I told him, for many years you had been the boss in the house. You dictated the terms and you allowed the things to happen your way. People, the children were allowed to have the friends according to your likes and dislikes. Now you are no more the head. The financial head of the family is your son. He is a grown-up person. And in order to maintain your respect, when you see his friends have come, do not remain sitting there in that company because they will want to have things their way. You just maintain your respect, stay there, say hello and hi and leave the place by saying that you all have your good time and let me leave you. It becomes very painful. All your life you had been the boss, you had been dictating the terms, now nobody listens to you. You are watching everything and yet still you are helpless. You cannot control the things the way that you had always been doing. This is a state of nothingness. In a way you exist, 
The children give you respect. There is a gap between you and your grandchildren is of maybe two generations. The times have changed. This you have to accept in the same way when one passes into a state of dissolution, one is no more. It is a state of non-being as Buddha calls it or a state of nothingness. One cannot believe because in a sense, in a certain sense one is and in certain sense one is no more. In the sense means you are present there as, a, as the head of the family but you do not have any powers. You are no more de facto. The paradox has come to the ultimate. One is and one is not. One can see one own corpse. One is dead and is still no one knows that one is seen. So one must be in some way, in some sense. All the past ideas of the self have become irrelevant. A new idea of self arises. This is what happens. The old values which was the way of life two generations ago are no more relevant now. They are outdated. You have to accept it. Sometimes it becomes a great pain. Unless one has grown spiritually. Why was it so difficult for some the person who had asked me this question? Because he was not able to leave his past. Continue to live in that. The energies of the bodies were no more. He was no more at the helm of affairs. This is a, a, an example to explain to you what actually happens when one attains to fana. In a way you exist, but in a way you are not. You are a watcher on the hill. Everything is happening and you have no control over that. Except to accept everything as it is. Death happens, one disappears. This is what Christians call crucifixion. Nothingness has arrived. One is just an empty sky. Hindus call this as Samadhi. Zen calls it as Saturi, a small window in the vastness of the sky. The sky is vast, but when you look at the sky through the framed window. When you are looking at the sky outside your room through the window, the window becomes a picture frame through which you are seeing in the background the blue sky. But you are only seeing a part of it that window can encompass in its capacity. It is called Saturn. The other way is when you come out of the house and you are under the open sky, the, you are covered by this blue sky like, like canopy. Zen calls it as Saturn. And the negative part is that one complains. It will be good to remind you that crucifixion, Jesus shows both attitude. When he had to carry his cross on his shoulders, he carries it. He was expecting the miracle to happen. He, he has reached the top of the hill. The cross is fixed. Jesus complains. He looks at the sky and says, Why? Why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? This is the negative part. He is complaining. He is dying and no help is arriving. He is on the cross and deep down somewhere there must have been lurking a desire that God's hand will arrive and everything will be okay and the cross will become a crown and he will descend into a new glory. This is what happens. Somewhere there must have been a lurking desire in the very unconscious core of his mind. He may not have been aware of it. He had waited long enough and the last point has come. The ultimate peak has come. He had carried his cross on his 
shoulders to the hill. He had suffered all kind of humiliation, but he had waited, patiently waited, waited for this moment to come. Now his hands have been nailed. Now it is a question of seconds and he will be gone, he will be no more. Now there is no time left to wait anymore and the help has not come yet. God is not visible, hence the cry. Why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? This is the negative part, the natural even to a man like Jesus. This is the human element. Through this example, the human element and the divine element of an individual are shown very clearly. Up to this moment, Jesus is the son of man, son of Mary and Joseph and he complains. If you think of your past and then complain, I have been doing all that was asked me to do, all that you have ordered me to do. I have followed you blindly and this is the result. The old man continued to lament that he had lived his life honestly. He worked hard for the sake of children. Now children are not paying the respect. His criteria of respect was different. He wanted the children to be in the same way as they used to be when he was at the helm of affairs and children and his grown-up children was then small children. Jesus, you complain I have followed you blindly and this is the result. This is the fulfillment. The positive, there is another part of it. The positive part is deep gratitude. With the second, the positive part, one forgets the past, one looks into future and one trusts. The last test has come, the ultimate test. And one feels grateful that if this is your will, let it be done. That is what Jesus did. He showed both elements. First he showed the negative, which is very human. I love Jesus because he showed that. He showed that to the very core of the last moment, it is an example that was he was a human. He was very human. That is why he used to say again and again, I am the son of man. As many times as he says, I am the son of God, he says, I am the son of man. He was eternity come into time. He was the beyond entered into the world. He belonged to both the world and the beyond. That is how the Master belongs to both. One foot is in this world and the other foot is in the life beyond. He is a bridge between this world and the world beyond. And on the day of crucifixion, in that very moment, when all is disappearing, Jesus still gives the last message to humanity. He shows both attitudes, both ways that the human element complains even when there is a greatest benediction going to happen to you. But the very moment it has to be transformed into the positive attitude. Let thy will prevail. Human element complains, why is this happening? I know it not, let thy will be me. This was the essence of the couplet that was sent to me when I was 14 or 15 or maybe 16 years of age. Shayad khiza se ho koi nai surat bahar ki kuch maslehat isi mein hai mere parvardigar ki. May spring bring a new portrayal to autumn. What is the wish of my master? I know it not. Let thy will be me. Unless it comes on your lips with full gratitude and trust, let thy will prevail. You have not yet understood the sixth valley of abysmal, the valley of abysmal. And this is important because it is important to go through this valley in order to attain to totality of meditation. 
First he shows the attitude of being son of man. He says, why? Why have you abandoned me? I have hoped, I have prayed, I have lived a life of virtue and this is the fulfillment, this is the reward. But then he immediately understands that he is missing the point. If this is the will of God, then this has to be so because nothing happens unless he wills it so. But we are so much engrossed in our human element that we miss to see that divine element. We miss to see that point. From all around the miseries are coming. I have failed a third time in BSC. The entire career is in front of me. Father wants me to study science subjects because this was his aspirations for me to be an engineer or a doctor or in a high place in a high position. But that is not the will of the masters. That is not the will of the divine. And that couplet was the peak of this abysmal valley where you are go on the threshold threshold from where you can enter into the negative part or into the positive part that thy will prevail and that's it if this is the will of God then this has to be so he surrenders the positive is gratitude surrender with why have you abandoned me he recognizes his complaint his humanity his human element he must have laughed in that wedding he must have seen his limitation as a human being and he dropped it immediately he says his ultimate statement is thy kingdom come thy will be done gratitude has arisen surrender is total now there is nothing more jesus died as the son of god and the gap is very very tiny in just a split of a second he changed from being man into god being the son of man to son of god the moment complaint changes into trust you change from human into god he becomes a prayer thy will be done now he is no more now he has no will of his own thy will is supreme this is the ultimate in this valley sixth valley the abysmal valley you experience the two you become the bridge between your humanness and your divineness you are born with that but while interacting in the world of objects and beings human element remains dominant now what is important the ultimate in meditation although you are a human being but you carry within this spark of divinity within you and every action every moment has to be guided by that inner oneness, inner harmony, inner serenity, inner blissfulness, then meditation has happened. Thereafter, there is nothing else but a celebration. Seventh is the valley of hymns, the last one.